prior to the 19th century, all carpenter planes consisted of a blade embedded in a wooden body. Beginning in the middle of the century, manufacturers began making planes with metal bodies, many of which were patented in the United States. We have six examples here. The first was patented by William Loughborough of New York in 1854, which makes it one of the oldest patented iron planes. It has a cast iron body, but the patented feature is the adjustable lever cap, which is the part of the plane that holds the blade in place. The lever cap has screws mounted on either side to adjust the angle of the blade. Other manufacturers would later patent more convenient methods of adjusting the angle, and this plane is very rare. It has Loughborough's name, as well as the manufacturer of the plane, cast into the toe. The second plane is an example of a scraper. This particular scraper was patented in 1874 by a couple of guys from Buchanan, Michigan, and manufactured by the Eclipse Plane Company of Ohio. Although the company's advertising modestly called it the best scraping plane in the world, it was not a commercial success. This is an example of Oral Chaplin's 1872 patent. The principal feature of the patent was a perforated sole, which was intended to reduce friction between the sole and the wood surface being planed. Although that feature was not incorporated into manufactured planes, the blade adjustment mechanism, which used a rack and pinion to set the depth of the cutter, was used by the Tower and Lion Company of New York in a wide variety of planes. What makes this one very rare is that it is a number two size, which was the smallest bench plane offered by most manufacturers. In addition, it has a cast iron handle, or tote, and knob, whereas almost all other planes of the era had wooden totes and knobs. It has O.R. Chaplin's patent cast around the base of the knob. Pattern makers generally had need of planes with convex soles that would cut hollows or semicircular grooves in wood of different diameters. This was usually accomplished by having a plain body with a number of interchangeable soles with different profiles. This is an example of an adjustable plane with a sole comprised of slats that could be moved or adjusted to create a sole with different profiles without the need for interchangeable soles. It is marked patent applied for in Harris, San Francisco. But although a handful of examples are known, the identity of the maker and whether it ever actually received a patent are not known. This is a plow plane, which is designed to cut a groove in a board at a fixed distance from the edge of the board. Plow planes need to have a fence that rides along the side of the board and can be adjusted to set the blade's different distance from the edge. Usually, this was accomplished by having the fence attached by two adjustable arms. But this gizmo, which was patented in 1871 by Ellis Morris of Canton, Ohio, uses a scissors-type mechanism to set the distance of the fence. Interestingly, the innovation described in the patent is not the fence mechanism, but an adjustable sole comprised of sliding plates like the Harris plane we just looked at. This is an example of the number 41 plane, which is made of cast iron, other models had different configurations, and some of them were made of gunmetal. The number 41 came with a removable Philitster bottom, so it could be configured either as a plow or a Philitster plane. While Miller's patent planes in general are not rare, this is a very rare example of a Type 1, which has been nicknamed the hook nose due to the small hook in the frame, which appears to have been purely decorative and was eliminated in later models. This particular example also comes with a complete set of its original cutters.